<laughs> What's been the, the unusual challenge as opposed to other projects you've worked on or the, the thing you necessarily didn't see coming when you got into production that's been fun to kind of solve and, and find creative solutions for? That's been fun? <laughs> well, you, you, we can go either way. <laughs> well, I mean, for me, and I think this is the case for you, I mean, just things that have been different for us. Um, um, and for me to direct, yeah, I directed episodes of, of Veronica Mars and the movie Veronica Mars, um, but that didn't prepare me for the level of violence, blood, visual effects. Um, and even as a writer, I've never, you know, people bashing brains in. It's, that's usually the writer's room, not the actual <laughs> Right. That's just if the script comes yeah. in late. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I feel like I've learned more about visual effects, you know, as sort of a character writer doing shows of people talking in rooms and now suddenly, you know, we've got zombies and blood and shotguns and uh, people in expensive zombie makeup. I, I don't know how they, like, we did our first, like, full-fledged, it's last week's episode, um, our Romero zombie, and, like, it's like a $20,000 hit to do that, like, on the friend in the well? Yeah, on the friend in the well. And the well did they actually kill people and make them zombies? See, that seems so much... <laughs> Is that cheaper? It's cheaper. Well, it seems yeah, cheaper. Yeah. Well, but, yeah. in Canada. Yeah. 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 And people are willing to do it. They're like, I just want to be on the show. I'll die. It's okay. Daryl, can we... Are we going to see why well zombie friend is different than Blaine and... Well, we can... I, I, we'll say that out loud. Um, if Liv quit eating brains, that's what she would become. That, like, that is... Marcy was the cautionary tale. Um, if, if, uh, if Liv could not get her hands on brains, or if any of us... We want that that specter, that fear for... You know, there, we don't know exactly how many... Well, we know how many <laughs> zombies are, uh, are wandering around Seattle, but... Um, uh, Liv doesn't, and if they quit eating, that is what they become, and the potential, not only for Liv to see her fate, but the potential for a zombie apocalypse, we wanted to put that in people's minds. How soon will we find out how many zombies are actually out there? You won't find out this season. Oh, come on. You will know there are more. Uh, you will meet more zombies. But, but you won't have an exact head count. Right, okay. right. And if, and if Blaine is, wor I don't know if he's working for anybody else, or if he's on his own or um, well this is one of those things that in a way we don't want to spoil um, yeah. I mean I can <laughs> what is, what is, I would how, say does it matter when it's David <laughs> Andrews do you care if there's someone else like don't you just want to know like do you just want to be with Blaine anyway so <laughs> be there another person maybe there's not one I'm just I'm more interested in what he's doing I would put shit wrong I would dance Shit. Without revealing anything, I mean, can you talk about what answers you want to give by the end of the season, what things you want to leave open for season two? Um, well, we will tell, we will have a little bit step, come a little bit closer to understanding uh, possibly what, what happens. Trigger? Like, yeah, I mean, things that we're going to, we're going to go down a path with Ravi uh, developing the cure, that's going to happen. You're going to learn a lot more about Blaine's business model. In fact, you're going to be learning about Blaine's business model very soon. I would even be willing to tell you Blaine's business model if it doesn't come out in print before uh, before the I audience is... Like, I can guarantee it. <laughs> yeah. well, wait, when, when we don't find out yet. Uh, what if we don't find out? We do find out. We in find four? out. Four is such a thing. No, yeah. not in four, but in five. I don't trust them. They look sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> You're the boss. We'll You're the boss. We'll whisper it. You're the boss. I do whatever you say. You say jump. I say how high. Well, well I mean, I, I mean, we allude to it. I mean, you, I, I mean, with stuff that you kind of see in episode two. Blaine has a business model. He create. He finds wealthy people who can pay top dollar for brains, turns them into zombies, and then charges him for delivery, and he gets. Like Creating drug addicts. Yeah, you know, okay. and then He's selling the product. Yeah, and right. then, um, and then, part of the question is, where is he getting those 
people and he tends to try to get people who will not be missed and those people and you've seen a bit of this as well uh, tend to be the sort of people that Major works with in his job at a home for runaway teenagers so everything builds towards showdown how tightly plotted is is your big picture season and how much do you leave room for yourselves to make discoveries and and make zigs and zags along the way um you know uh, in both cases, I, I, well, in both cases, uh, you only asked about one case, but I, I would say this is true of Veronica Mars as well, is I think we have a really strong idea of how the season is going to end. In fact, the scenes that we end in the season with are the ones that I pitched to Robert Buckley when he was trying to say, he, he, you know, he was worried, am I just going to be the the boyfriend? Um, am I just going to be handsome? Yeah. <laughs> Do I do I get anything to do? And I pitched him what we thought the how the season was going to end and what he was doing. And I would say that almost scene for scene, what I pitched him is is in the show. So we have some of that. But like on Veronica Mars, we know where it's ending, and then the fun of getting there. There, there's a whole. Don't listen to anything he says. <laughs> oh, man. Man. I don't. Uh, <laughs> wait. <laughs> This is Veronica Mars. It, um, was that with Veronica Mars, we were on the air, and I could, we could hear fan reaction and kind of know what was working and what clues were steering people in certain directions. And like we could steer the ship a little bit. Like if people are thinking that the person who did it actually did it, we can move them away from that. Or uh, and who the if the audience is liking that Logan fellow, perhaps yeah, we should maybe work. that would maybe that's a good idea to uh, to develop. And we didn't have that advantage, but um, but we did. You know, we discovered things in the show uh, just from what we enjoyed watching and what we liked in dailies and studio and network liked. And I would say that over the course of the season. Um, the episodes, I think, become less case-driven, less murder case of the week, that the zombie mythology is, like, the dessert becomes the main course, you know, that, that we, um, that there's so much fun in the zombie mythology. And in Liv's journey with that. Yeah, that, that, that it, and I'm not saying that, that, that we threw out the case of the week, I would just say that maybe five or six pages at the beginning of the season were in the case of the week, but now been shifted over into the zombie uh, world, the zombie mythology. So would you say that you have like a, a rough plan of where you would go with the future season? Uh, rough. <laughs> we actually have a really great plan up until season, to episode 100, we have completely <laughs> mapped out and then we'll go. Robbie so nails the what character. Happens she's, that one? She's, uh, <laughs> she's no longer a zombie. We just shut down production. We shut down production. <laughs> we each have a boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, what, what, has there been anything surprising about the fan reaction now that the show is out and, you know, everybody is talking about it? I've been just blown. I, I hear it from, because I'm afraid of, like, social media except for Facebook, which I love, but Twitter still doesn't <laughs> happen to me, but I get it from Raul and Malcolm that, I, that it's just love, love, love. Yeah, it, and that, it's awesome. It, that, it, it's, it's been really nice. Yeah, I, I know that's a bland <laughs> answer to that question. But, um, but for the first, like, when we did Veronica Mars, there was television without pity, but there was not, and, and I didn't dare kind of set foot in that. Um, I, I, did I did use that. Um, <laughs> but, um, but this time there's Twitter, and I've never, I haven't had a show on the air while Twitter existed, and so I am wandering out, like on, I'm, I'm tweeting, to, yeah, I'm tweeting, <laughs> tweeting yeah. Are they uh, on show nights, and it's been great, yeah, I, I dig it, it's fun, it's, it's been nice. Along those lines, I actually have a fan, um, she's now old, her name's Leslie, and she wants to know, um, do you think that young, do you think younger viewers should watch the show? And my daughter wants to know why that nine-year-old gets to watch the show, and she is a ten-year-old doesn't. How are you up to late? Um, um, so she, is she a Nielsen fan? <laughs> in, that, in which case, she should really watch. She should. Um, it would help her with her education. <laughs> keep her up um, My ten-year-old doesn't get to watch. Um, but Daniel Stockton. But 
but one of our producers, she's got a eight and a twelve, and they both watch it. I, but they're LA kids. I have sweet Norman Rockwell Middle America kids. Oh yeah, she could. She could. Yeah. <laughs> That's no problem. She could look out her back door. <laughs> Something that I've heard uh, being talked about with some of the uh, other actors is that a lot of you don't really know where their characters are going or where the show's going. And do you, is there a reason that you keep them in the dark or are you still creating it? Or? They're just um, trying not to ask question. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? Yeah. Okay. They know where their characters Yeah, like, I mean, well, you Robert, 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 Robert Duckley like, knew, I mean, I told him exactly where we're going. I mean, I would say with, with it's with, like, Clive and Robbie, they're so integrated with the case of the week. We, we haven't given them sort of their own personal arcs and journeys. That, that, so it, I understand what they're saying and that they don't know exactly. Well, I was where when you said that you don't know when you're like the second season you haven't planned up to there, but like how much how, how much do you have? Like where do you see this going? Um, we, we have, I mean, we. When we when we broke our final episode, we actually had to look at it as where where do we land everyone for the beginning of season two? We had to understand what season two was going to look like before we could so write the that we could write the finale. We don't have every. I don't know as much about season two as I probably did going into season one, but the pilot process is so demanding of having your shit together uh, on that. Um, but we know roughly. We and, and you know the first two or three weeks in the writers' room is kind of spent talking about what is the big picture of the season. We tried to land them in juicy places that we were excited about launching them from. Um, We've got key players in position, um, but there's there's still stuff to figure out. Thank you.